Good afternoon. I'm Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego, and I'm honored to join you here today to mark 150, 140 years since the incorporation of the city of Phoenix. I am truly honored to, stare, to share the stage today with leaders who helped make our city's history happen. We are joined today by Governor Stephen Rowe Lewis of the Gila River Indian Community, Mayor Terry Goddard, and Mayor Phil Gordon. Each of these men has been critical in shaping the legacy of Phoenix and the surrounding region, and the initiatives they began continue into our future. They've passed the torch to me, and I'm proud of what we've already begun to accomplish for t this, the Phoenix, Phoenix, the nation's fifth largest city. On February 25th of 1881, Phoenix was incorporated. The territorial legislature signed legislation incorporating the city of Phoenix, setting up a government that included a mayor and four members of the council. Governor Fremont signed that legislation 140 years ago tomorrow. Uh, we're holding this event today because we know that not everyone in Phoenix has that 140th anniversary on the council. Uh, we're hoping to raise awareness and that tomorrow people will think of ways to celebrate our 140th milestone in their own way, whether it's educators talking about 140 years of Phoenix with their classes or people going out in our community to support their favorite business, including Wholesome Bakery, which was also founded in 1881, 140 years ago before today's events. Uh, we have a, a rich history uh, that includes our founders that you'll hear about today and the canals on which our city was built to bring water, a great collaborative effort that really shows the values of Phoenicians working together. Uh, I'm very excited that we'll begin today's program with Governor Stephen Rowe Lewis of the Gila River Indian Community. Although incorporation happened 140 years ago, this area has a deep history, including amazing achievements by our Native American communities that are far beyond 140 years, and we want to acknowledge and celebrate that history, as well as the great partnership we have with the Gila River Indian community. Governor Roe Lewis is among the busiest people in all of Arizona with so many activities from helping make sure his community is vaccinated to um, working with the state legislature to cut, craft better policy. And I'm honored that he took time from his busy schedule to help Phoenix mark 140 years since incorporation. Please welcome Governor Roe Lewis. Good afternoon, Mayor Gallego, Mayor Goddard, Mayor Johnson, and Mayor Gordon. It's an honor to be here today to commemorate the 140th anniversary of the incorporation of the city of Phoenix on February 25th, 1881. The Gila River Indian community and our sister Autumn tribes in the area have watched the city of Phoenix grow and expand throughout the generations and become what is now the fifth largest city in the United States. That expansion ultimately resulted in the city boundaries and the reservation boundaries meeting. I say that because it brings a common interest and an incentive for us to work together as elected leaders to consider how our policies, our priorities, and actions affect each other. A sovereign tribal nation and the largest city in Arizona. Nowhere has that been more obvious than during the pandemic. I've truly appreciated the strong leadership that Mayor Gallego has put in place to combat the pandemic because the virus knows no boundaries. I know that my executive orders on the community impact the citizens of Phoenix who work on our community, who visit our community, and I know the policies put in place by Mayor Gallego have impacted our ability to keep the community from becoming a hotspot. We've talked often about the pandemic, and during your tenure as mayor, I have truly appreciated the partnership you have shown to our community. The relationship between the Akimara Atam and Peeposh peoples and the citizens of Phoenix have existed for every day of the 140-year history of Phoenix. Since time immemorial, 
we have called this area our Autumn Juvet, our traditional Aboriginal land of the Autumn. We are proud of our historic connection to our ancestors, the Hooligam, whose complex canal systems, really a truly engineering marvel, provided the blueprint for bringing water and life to the city and cultural sites such as the Pueblo Grande Museum. Mayor Gallego, you and I are just the stewards of this continuum, this relationship during this time. But I know that we both have a strong desire to make sure the relationship is built on mutual respect, friendship, and that is to the benefit of all our people, our citizens. The community looks forward to many more decades of a cooperative and visionary relationship between our two governments, one that will make life better for generations to come. Thank you again, Mayor Gallego, for inviting me to participate in today's event. Leadership matters. Also remembering the first peoples of this area in the collective history matters, especially during this time as we move forward. Recognizing the 140th anniversary of the city of Phoenix. At this time, I'd like to bring up Mayor Terry Goddard, a good friend of my late father, Rod Lewis, and a friend of the community as well, during his time on to the present as well. Mayor Terry Goddard. Thank you, Governor Lewis. Uh, Mayor Gallego, Mayor, John Mayor, Mayor Johnson in absentia, and Mayor Gordon uh, in, in flesh. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and to recognize the really awesome history of the city of Phoenix. Um, as Governor Lewis has just alluded to, we're here today because of a fortuitous combination of very rich soil and the water of the Salt River. And what brought it all together was an amazing system of canals. And as mayor of Phoenix, and still today, I keep this map on my wall, which is the 1925 map of the Hohokam canals throughout the Salt River. And you can see right here in the middle is the city of Phoenix, sort of a little tiny bunch of huts, uh, excuse me, houses, uh, which uh, basically sprung from what had already been achieved because the opportunity of this valley was seen over 2,000 years ago by the Native Americans. And I just want to quote what's at the bottom of this map. It says, these were the original engineers, the true pioneers who built, used, and abandoned a canal system, and here's the good part, when London and Paris were a cluster of wild huts. So I think that puts it in pretty good perspective. And 140 years ago, give or take a couple of months, a guy named Jack Swilling came down from Wickenburg and gets the credit for founding the city of Phoenix. Now, Jack was a speculative developer and had a sketchy past. Does that sound at all familiar uh, for some things that came later? But he saw the opportunity. And what was the opportunity? He thought here in Phoenix, we could grow the crops to feed the hungry people of Wickenburg. So he was no slouch. He knew what the big opportunities were here in the Salt River Valley. And uh, he raised $400 and came in and took the first, the so-called Swilling Ditch, was actually one of the original Hohokam canals. He just had the ingenuity to take the, the accumulated dirt out of the canal and start using it to bring water from the Salt River. And that allowed the beginnings of commercial irrigation and farming here in central Arizona. Uh, so it was an amazing accomplishment. And they had to name this city. Swilling himself, favored Pumpkinville, a uh, truly awesome name, would have gone down in history, I'm sure, but there was a popular vote. And the other contenders, I'm told, I wasn't there, uh, but the other contenders were Stonewall and Salidas and uh, Millville. But a gentleman named D Daryl Dupa, whose original home is about half a mile from here, um, he came up, he was a classical scholar. He was what they call a remittance man, which means his money, his family was paying money to keep him from coming back to England. 
In other words, they didn't want him to come home. So he was here looking for uh, cities to name, I guess. And he came up with the name Phoenix. And the reason he did was precisely because of this map. He said, this is a city which is growing over the, not on the ruins of, but on the architecture, on the skeleton that was provided thousands of years ago. And therefore it's rising from the ashes and should be called Phoenix. And it's a magical name. I can tell you that as mayor, all across the world, people respond to the name Phoenix. It's something that has a tremendous amount of power. So that's how we got here. Um, and then uh, the, the, the rest of the story, of course, is the governor of Fremont on tomorrow, uh, 140 years ago, signed the proclamation from the state legislature, the territorial legislature, that authorized the charter of the now city of Phoenix. And so the rest of the story will be taken up by former mayor Phil Gordon, because he can bring us up to the present time, I believe. Phil? Thank you, uh, Mayor, Governor, thank you very much, and certainly Mayor Goddard and AG, Mr. General Goddard. Let me, uh, first of all, uh, add a little to uh, what Mayor Goddard was saying is in terms of the founding of our site. I think most people maybe realize that the original township is just over our shoulder at 7th Street in Van Buren. Uh, where there's a couple of fine restaurants and other buildings that the city preserved in kind and moved a couple original buildings over uh, to preserve our history. And at that time, Phoenix was getting criticized, and still does once in a while, by people that don't know the history of Phoenix, that we didn't care about our history. We're a new city, a western city with no roots. Well, that's about as far from the truth as one could imagine because Heritage Square was preserved. But let's go back further. You heard about our, our great brothers and sisters, the, the Native American community that helped found or that founded this valley. But the actual town site was a debate amongst developers, Terry, as you said. It was going to go out west where some land speculators had already assembled the land. It was going to go east to that individual you mentioned. And luckily, the citizens of Phoenix, I think roughly 200,000, if I recall, well, not less than 1,000. 200,000 when we were incorporated, I think, or at some point. Oh, the state was 200,000 in those days. Um, voted on, on the name Phoenix. And as a mayor, I wanted something to remember my service, so I got the Phoenix bird. And I will offer to pay any mayor, past or present, uh, to uh, if they want to get one after they serve yeah, or have served. <laughs> okay, let me talk to you a little more about this history. So we could go back decades, hundreds of years, and, and realize what brought us all here. This 80 degree temperature when the, most of the rest of the country is freezing or coming out of frost. This is Phoenix. It's a diverse community. It always has been and always will be. It was the first city, major city, to ever have a paid MLK Day. It was the first city to have a holiday for Cesar Chavez. It was the first city under Mayor Goddard to not only draft a soon-to-be future mayor, myself, to draft the Historic Preservation Ordinance, but actually implemented it, created a Historic Preservation Commission, and a lot of buildings, whether it's the Schemer Arts Center, Heritage Square, uh, the uh, Hohokam Village, uh, I could go on, Heritage uh, uh, Pioneer Village out north. There are so many examples that have occurred to preserve the physical buildings but also the memory. If you go into City Hall outside the mayor's office, you'll see every mayor and council person. Take a look at some of those uh, individuals. So that was some of the buildings. But then, we, you just can't say we want to protect our history without doing something about it. The citizens overwhelmingly have passed time since Mayor Goddard uh, started it. Historic preservation bond funds in every historic, in every, uh, major bond campaign, including the one that I was involved in as mayor, where we had $6 million worth of requests and $980 million worth of funding, and the community came together and unanimously passed everyone, including money for historic preservation to preserve our culture, our, our uh, buildings, our, our uh, important physical features. So anyone that thinks that Phoenix hasn't uh, wanted to protect its history, 
I, I would remind them to do that. So, Mayor, I would ask you to consider, I don't know if it makes sense uh, under the current times, but maybe we should talk to our Historic Preservation Commission and actually add on to it a cultural preservation component and maybe look at honoring individuals that have served the community that are underrepresented in terms of really their contribution. Um, just a thought, but, and then if we had a side room where all the old mayors could kind of get rid of all their old plaques and, <laughs> and, and, and symbols, it'd be a nice little, you know, thing to do. Anyway, I just want to thank everybody for being here. And let me close by this. First of all, I want to remember, and all of us remember, all those that are past and passing away, that have contributed to the valley, that have been affected by diseases or war. I, I want to also thank the City of Phoenix employees led by the mayor, the best employees. I've said that. Every mayor that has had the honor and privilege to serve this city knows that. Whether it's police and fire, whether it's the sanitation workers, whether it's the park workers, the street workers, the human service workers, the neighborhood workers, um, they're the ones that care about the city and they're the ones that make sure that people won't forget what the city is really about, about helping those that need help and prospering. And we'll do that. Thank you very much for inviting me. And Mayor, I'd like to uh, present you on behalf of the, uh, Jim Kaufman and myself, after the Phoenix Union buildings were going to be torn down, and unfortunately a couple were, um, one of the buildings that was torn down was, this was relegated to the melting heap. And uh, we both rescued it, put it away for a special day. And uh, if the Historic Commission would like it, uh, it's theirs. If not, it makes a great table. <laughs> because it won't break. Thank you very much. Thank you to our mayors and Governor Roe Lewis for those inspiring comments, and thank you to uh, all the hard work you have done to preserve our city's history. In 140 years, few cities have accomplished as much as the city of Phoenix. We have truly within 140 years built an amazing city from a very small town uh, with a rascal for a founder to one of the leading metropolises in the United States. We are now the fifth largest city. Who could have seen that 140 years ago when we were an agricultural community built to prov provide the mighty city of Wickenburg with their agricultural goods? In that 140 years, we have accomplished so much and become a truly leading city, a leader in financial services, in education, the type of international destination that the top semiconductor company picked during the middle of the pandemic for their future home. Uh, we are the home of Sky Harbor Airport and countless communities and neighborhoods, including one of the largest populations of Native American communities, truly fitting given our roots and that we would not exist without our, the ancestors who built our amazing canal system and allowed that ditch company that provided the original water for Phoenix when we were incorporated uh, we are also a city that, that came together because of collaboration and farmers working together to build this community. And we have that collaborative spirit today where uh, your neighbors are rooting for you to succeed and you can fulfill your dreams in Phoenix. You can fulfill the vision of Mr. Dupa who thought that not only the city would rise, but the people within it would rise and that this would be a community of opportunity. We have a lot of work to do in our next 150 years, but we've accomplished so much. I want to recognize all those who have built this city, including the mayors who came before me and who will help us move forward in the next 150 years. As mayor, I'm asking everyone to spend some time on February 25th, 2021, celebrating 140 years of Phoenix and our wonderful city. Thank you so much for joining us here today.